mastery practice for chapter 3. So questions number 1. Form system of linear equations in three variables for the following situations. So for questions A here, we have three variables, which is the first one is the history books, the second one is the mathematics books, and the third one will be the science books. So first, I'm going to label the history books as X, mathematics book as Y, and the science book as Z. So now we're going to form the linear equations based on the questions given. So first, Abdullah bought a history book, which is just X, two mathematics books, two Y, and three science books, three Z. So sum this up, Chong is going to, Abdullah is going to spend 120 ringgit. So therefore, x plus 2y plus 3z equal to 120. The second one is Chong buys two history books, 2x, three mathematics books, 3y, and two science books, 2z. So sum this up, Chong is going to spend 110. Alright, the last one, meanwhile, Kala Devi buy a history book, just X, four mathematics books, four Y, and two science books, two Z. So sum this up, Kala Devi is going to spend 180. So when you write for the linear equations, there is no need for you to include uh, the unit into the equations. In this case, it's the RM. B. There are a total of 30 coins which consists of 10 cent, 20 cent, and 50 cents coins in a box. The total value of the coin is 20 ringgit 60 cents. Salma bought an ice cream using 2 50 cents and 3 20 cents coins. So, first, let us label the 10 cent coin as X, 20 cents coin as Y, and the 50 cents coins as Z. So, this XYZ represented the number of coins as we know here there are a total of 30 coins so which means when the number of coins for the 10 cent plus the number of coins for the 20 cent and plus with the number of coins for the 50 cents the answer will equal to 30. so next we can form another equations based on the total value of the coins which is 20 ringgit 60 cents so the value for the 10 cents coin will be 10 cents multiply the number of the 10 cents coin plus the 20 cents multiply the number of the 20 cents coin plus the 50 cents multiply the number of 50 cents coins. So the value here will equal to 20 ringgit 60 cents. As here we are using 10, 20, 50 which is in the form of cents. Therefore, the total answer, we're going to convert the 20 ringgit 60 cents in the form of cents. So we're going to multiply it by 100 as 1 ringgit is equal to 100 cents. Therefore, the value will be 20, 60. Alright, so another one, uh, Salma bought an ice cream using 250 cents and 320 cents coin. So if you want to form another equation just based on the number of coins, uh, the number of 10 cents coin is not going to change therefore it's still going to be x as Salma already used uh, 3 20 cents coin therefore the number of the 20 cents coin will be y minus 3 and use Salma use another 2 50 cents therefore the number of the 50 cents coin is going to be z minus 2 and here the total will equal to 25 as you already used two 50 cents coin and three 20 cents coins questions number two solve the following system of linear equations so first for questions a i just want to label the equations first here you can choose to use the eliminations methods or the substitutions method so for questions a i'm going to use the eliminations method and if you look at the variable y here, the coefficients for the y is equal to 1. Therefore, you are able to eliminate the variable y without the needs to equalize it. So, 
first I'm going to choose uh, equations 1 and 2 and I'm going to eliminate the y by using equations number 1 plus equations number 2 all right so when x plus x here you're going to have 2x and then this negative y plus with this positive y it will equal to 0 then this positive 2z plus this negative 3z it will equal to negative z then the number 3 plus this negative 10 it will equal to negative 7 so here I'm going to label this as my equations number 4 now the next pair of equations that I'm going to use to eliminate the y will be the equations 3 and 2 all right so to get rid of the y I'm going to use equations 3 minus equations 2 so that my x will uh, in a positive form so when 2x minus x are going to have 1x so when y positive y minus the other positive y it will equal to 0 and then this negative z minus this negative 3z it will equal to positive 2z all right so negative 6 minus this negative 10 this will equal to positive 4 and I'm going to label this as my equations number 5. Now, let us focus on equations 4 and 5. You can solve this using uh, elimination method. You can continue with it or you can use the substitution method. So here I'm just going to continue with the uh, elimination method. So I'm going to continue to eliminate for the x here. Therefore, I need to equalize the value of x. To do that, I'm going to use equations number 5 multiplied by 2. Alright, so each of the term in equations number 5 uh, will be multiplied by 2. So therefore, you're going to have 2x plus 4z equal to 8. So this I'm going to label as my equations number 6. So now let us focus on equations 6 and 4. Now we already equalized the value of x. To get rid of it, I'm going to use equation 6 minus equation 4. So 2x minus 2x equal to 0. 4z minus this negative z, it will become plus. So therefore, you're going to have 5z. Add minus negative 7, so this will equal to 15. So z equal to 15 divided by 5, which is equal to 3. So now... You can substitute the z equal to 3. Here I'm going to substitute it into the equations number 5 to find the value of x. So the z just replace it with 3. So x is equal to 4 minus 6. Therefore the x is equal to negative 2. Now, I'm going to continue to substitute the x equal to negative 2 and the z equal to 3. Here, I'm going to substitute it into the equations number 1, for example, to find the value of y. So, the x is negative 2 minus y plus 2 times 3. This will equal to number 3. So, what happened next? Because I want to find the y, right? So, but the y here is a negative y. So, I'm going to move this y to the right-hand side and this number 3 to the left-hand side. Therefore, you're going to have negative 2 plus 6 minus 3 equal to y. So, solve this, you're going to find that the y is equal to 1. Questions B. So, first, let us label these equations. So next, I'm going to solve this using the uh, substitution method. So normally, we're going to choose a variable with the coefficients of 1. So in this case, I'm going to choose the z from the equations number 3 to be the subject of the formula. And this is a negative z. So I'm going to move it to the right-hand side. And I'm going to move this number 3 to the left-hand side. So from equations number 3, the z will equal to 3x plus y minus 3. So this will be the equations number 4. So now, I am going to substitute 
this equations number four into equations one and two. So into equation one first. So the z replace it with three x plus y minus three. Next, expand for this part. Next, I'm going to solve for the like terms. So x plus 15x, you're going to have 16x. And 2y plus 5y is 7y. And then move this negative 15 to the other side. So negative 17 plus 15 is equal to negative 2. So I'm going to label this as my equations number 5. So next, I'm going to substitute the equations number 4. Now this times into the equations number 2. So the z replace it with 3x plus y minus 3. Next, expand this part. Next, solve for the like terms. So 2x plus 6x is 8x. Negative 3y plus 2y is negative y. Move this negative 6 to the other side. So negative 16 plus 6 is equal to negative 10. Now, here I have a coefficient 1 for the variable y. As this is negative, so I'm going to move it to the right hand side and negative 10 to the right hand side. So therefore, you're going to find that y is equal to at x plus 10. So this I'm going to label as equations number 6. So now, I'm going to write it here. So substitute equation 6 into the equations number 5. So the y is at x plus 10. So as usual, expand this part. Going to have 56x plus 70. Alright, so for the like term, 16x plus 56x is equal to 72x. And then move the 70 to the other side, it will be negative 2 minus 70, which is equal to negative 72. Therefore, x is equal to negative 72 divided by 72, which is equal to negative 1. So now I'm going to substitute the x that we find into the equation 6 to find the value of y. So negative 8 plus 10 is equal to 2. So now I still need to find uh, my z. So now I'm going to substitute the x equal to negative 1 and y equal to 2 this times into equations number 4 so here you're going to have negative 3 plus 2 which is equal to negative 1 then minus 3 so z is equal to negative 4 equations number 3 the second angle of a triangle is 50 degree less than 4 times the first angle. The third angle is 40 degree less than the first angle. So find the value of each angle in the triangle. So there are three angles inside a triangle. So I'm going to label the first angle as the X, whereas the second angle as the Y, and the third angle as the Z. As we know, the total angle inside a triangle is equal to 180 degree. So the first equations, so the first angle plus with the second angle plus with the third angle, the total is 180. So now, based on the first sentence here, the second angle of the triangle. So in this case, it's referred to the Y. Is 50 degree less than 4 times the first angle. 4 times the first angle is 4 times x, which is 4x, 50 degree less. So I'm going to use 4x minus 50. Alright, 
So another angle, uh, another equations will be the third angle, which is referred to the Z in this case, is 40 degree less than the first angle. So the first angle is X, 40 degree less, so I'm going to minus it with 40. Alright, so label this as equations 1, 2, and 3. Now, I'm going to solve this using the substitutions method. And if you look at here, the equations 2y has been the subject and z also the subject of the formula. So straight away, in this case, I'm going to substitute the equations 2 and the equations 3 into the equations number 1. So x plus the y, which is 4x minus 50, plus with the z here is x minus 40, so equal to 180. So let us solve for the next terms. x plus 4x plus x is 6x. Alright, so negative 50 minus 40 is negative 90. Move it to the other side, it will be 180 plus 90, which is equal to 270. So x equal to 270 divided by 6, therefore x is equal to 45. So now let us substitute the x that we find first into the equations number 2 to find the y. So here 4 times 45 is 180, the minus 50 is equal to 130. And next, we're going to substitute the value of x into the equations number 3 to find the value of z. Therefore, z is equal to 5. So the first angle is 45 degree, the second angle is 130 degree, and z, the third angle is 5 degree. Questions number four. Given that the coordinate 5h is one of the solutions to the following simultaneous equations. So find the value of h and the other solutions to the simultaneous equations. So the coordinates here is one of the intersection points when you plot the graph using the equations given. So when you substitute the coordinates of the points that is lines on the curve or the straight lines back into the equation itself, what happens is that the value on the left-hand side of the equations will equal to the value of the right-hand side of the equations. So here I have three equations. So I'm going to choose the first two equations here to find the value of h. Alright, so according to these coordinates, the x is the number 5, the y is the h. So I'm going to replace the x and y in the equations using 5 and h. Alright, so I'm going to expand for this part. So 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 plus h on the right hand side here. So this is a quality equation. And if you look at the coefficients of my h square is equal to negative, right? So we always want a positive one so that we can factorize it easier. So I'm going to move this negative h to the right hand side, everything to the right hand side. Therefore, you're going to have positive h2. So here we'll have positive h minus 5h, which is equal to negative 4h plus 4 equal to 0. So now we're going to factorize this. So here you're going to have h minus 2, another bracket is still going to be h minus 2. So therefore, the value of h is equal to positive 2. So now the coordinates 5 and 2 is one of the intersection points of uh, our equations here. So next we need to find another intersection point. So now I first I'm going to solve this simultaneous equations. So the first pair is using the just like the first one here, just use the first and the second one. 
All right, now as I know my hash is equal to 2, so I'm going to substitute the hash here with number 2. So here, expand it, you're going to have 2x minus 2y. Mm, next, I'm going to solve for the next term. So here, I'm going to have 2x minus x. I move this x to the left-hand side and move the negative 2y to the uh, right-hand side. So y plus 2y minus 1. So here, you're going to have x equal to 3y minus 1. Alright, so that is the first equations that I have. Now, uh, the second pair of equations that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the second one and the third one. Alright, so I'm going to substitute the value of h as I already know what is the value of h. Alright, so now let us label this as uh, the x equal to 3y minus 1 equations number 1 and this one as my equations number 2. So now I'm going to substitute the equations 1 into the equations number 2. So the x we're going to replace it with 3y minus 1. Alright, so for the left hand side, we're going to solve for the last terms. 3y plus y is 4y. Negative 1 minus 1 is equal to negative 2. And we're going to expand for this part here. So you're going to have 3y square it, you're going to have 9y square. So minus 3y double it, you're going to have uh, minus 6y plus 1. Alright. So next, I'm going to continue to expand this. Alright. So next, I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side. And we're going to solve for the last term. So the first one is 18y squared minus 11y squared. So here, you want to have a positive 7y squared. Uh, then this negative 12, we're going to minus it with 4y, which we move from the left-hand side. You, therefore, we're going to have negative 16y. This positive 2 here, later on, will plus another 2. So it's going to be plus 4 equal to 0. So this one, you are able to factorize this completely. Therefore, you're going to have 7y minus 2 for the first bracket. And the second one is y minus 2. Therefore, the y is equal to 2 over 7, or the other value of y is y equal to 2. Now, we want to find the other solutions to the simultaneous equations. So if you look at here, the coordinate y, uh, which one for this one, which I highlight equal to 2, didn't it the same as the y in our coordinate? 5, 2 that is given in the questions. So, therefore, we're going to focus the other solutions, which is y equal to 2 over 7. So, next, I'm going to uh, just going to write here. I'm going to substitute the y equal to 2 over 7 into the equations number 1. Alright, so if you solve this, you'll find that x is equal to negative 1 over 7. So the other solutions in these questions will be when the x is equal to negative 1 over 7, the y is equal to 7 over 2. So this is another intersection point of the uh, equations when you plot it in the form of graph. Number five, 
Every month, Raju receives sources of income from his fixed salary as a sales officer, house renter, and online sales. His total monthly salary is RM20,000. If RM500 is added to his monthly salary, it will be twice the total income from house renter and online sales. The total monthly salary and online sales income is twice the house renter income. So how much does Raju receive from each source of income every month? So first, let us label. All right, so I'm going to label the fixed salary here using the letter X and the house renter as the letter Y and the online sales we're going to label it as Z now the total monthly salary is RM20,000 so here which means X plus Y plus Z is equal to 20,000 so that is the first equations that we can form so the second one is RM500 is added to his monthly salary. So here, uh, probably it's better if we just use the fixed salary here so we won't confuse with the total monthly salary that things. So it will be twice the total income, twice, yeah, the total income from house renter and online sales. So the fixed salary is the X. So when you add in another 500, so it will be X plus 500. Now this will be twice uh, from the income from house renter and online sale, which means two times the Y plus the X. So here straight away, I'm just going to expand it. Then I'm going to rearrange this. So X minus 2Y minus 2Z this will equal to negative 500. So this will be the second equations. Now the third equations will be here. The total, so here I just want to cancel the words money salary. So just use the fixed salary is easier. The total fixed salary and online sales income. So here will be the X plus the Z is twice the house rental income so it's going to be 2y now here i'm going to rearrange this as well so x minus 2y plus z this will equal to zero so here i have equations one equations two and equations three so here i already copy down the equations one two three so we can see it clearly so here I'm going to solve this using the uh, eliminations method. As you look at the coefficients for the x, they are all the same, which is equal to 1. So here, first I'm going to use equations number 1 minus the in equations number 2 in order to get rid of the x. So x minus x is equal to 0. So when y minus the negative 2y, this will become 3y. So z minus negative 2z, this will give you the answer of positive 3z. So 20,000 minus this negative 100, it will be 20,500. Alright, so this I'm going to label it as my equations number 4. So next, we're going to continue to eliminate the x by using the equations 1 and 3. So here, I'm going to use equations 1 minus equations 3. So x minus x equal to 0. y minus negative 2y equal to 3y. So z minus z, this one will be cancelled as well. So straight away, 3y equal to, so 20,000 minus 0 is equal to 20,000. Alright, so from here, the y is equal to 20,000 divided by 3. So if you convert it into a decimal, it will be 6,666.67. So straight away, we got the value of y. 
So next we want to find the value of Z. So here I'm going to substitute the Y. So I'm going to use the fractions, it's easier. Uh, into the equations number four. All right, so three brackets, 20,000 over three. So the three here can be cancelled. So 3z will equal to 20,500 minus this 20,000, which we're going to have 500. Therefore, z is equal to 500 over 3. Or if you convert this into decimal, it will be 166.67. Alright, so next we still need to find the value of the x. So here I'm going to substitute the y which is 20,000 over 3 and Z 500 over 3 this one I'm going to uh, substitute it into the equations number 3 for example to find the value of X All right, so here solve this part just using your calculator and move it to the right hand side. So the x is equal to 39,500 divided by 3. All right, so this one if you convert into decimal, it will be 13166.67. All right, so that is the uh, income of Raju from each sources. Number six, so Inji Abu plants vegetables on a plot of land in the shape of a right angle triangle. So given that the longest sides of the land is P meters, the other two sides are Q meters and 2Q minus 1 meters respectively. So Inji Abu fence the lens using a fencing of length 40 meters. So find the length in meters of each side of the land. So here I have a diagram of a right angle triangle. So based on the information, the longest sides of the land is P meter. So this one is referred to the hypotenuse. So I'm going to label the hypotenuse here with P. So the other two sides, it didn't matter. So just going to label this one as Q and the other one as 2Q minus 1. Alright, so we want to find the P and Q. So first let us form the equations. So from the information, the fencing of 40 meters, this one is referred to the perimeter. So therefore, I'm going to sum up all of the length. So P plus Q plus 2Q minus 1. So this will give you the answer of 40. Solve for the likes terms. And I'm going to move this negative 1 to the other side. So it will become 40 plus 1, 41. Then I'm going to let the P to become the subject of the formula. So I'm going to label this as my equations number one. So the other, inf the other equations you can form by using uh, the Pythagoras theorems. As we know that A squared plus B squared equal to C squared. So the C is always referred to the hypotenuse, the longer sides. So the other Two sides, let's us label the Q as our A and 2Q minus 1 as the B. So here we're going to have Q square plus 2Q minus 1 bracket square equal to P square. Alright, so this I'm going to label is as my equations number two. So now I'm going to substitute the equations 1 into the 2. Alright, so next we're going to expand for these two square here. So for the first one here, after expand it, you're going to have 4Q square minus 4Q plus 1 and as for this one you're going to have 1 6 at 1 minus 2 4 6 Q 
plus 9q square. Alright, next we're going to solve for the like terms and rearrange this in the general forms. So I want to keep my uh, coefficients of the q square as a positive one. Therefore, I'm going to move every term to the right hand side. Alright, so here we're going to have 9q square minus q square minus 4q square minus 4, 246q plus 4q plus 1, 6 at 1 minus 1. Alright, so this will equal to 0. So, solve for the like terms. Here you're going to have 4q square. Alright, and this one is a negative. 2, 4, 2, Q. Alright. Plus with the 1, 6, at 0. This one will equal to 0. So here we can simplify this by, by dividing every term using number 2. So here you're going to have 2, Q square. Minus 1, 2, 1, Q. Plus at 4, 0. So this equal to 0. So this one you are able to factorize this completely. So the first bracket is... 2q minus 1 of 5. The second bracket is q minus n equal to 0. So q is equal to 1 of 5 over 2 or q is equal to n. So now we want to find the value of p. So I'm going to write it here. So now substitute the q that we find. into the equations number one so the first one will be p equal to 41 minus 3q or the other value of p is 41 minus 3 times eight all right so for the first one uh, after you solve it you're going to get negative 233 over 2 Another P is going to be 41 minus 24, which is 17. Now, if you look at the P, that is the hypotenuse of our right angle triangle. And the length cannot be in the form of negative. Therefore, the P equal to negative 233. So for this answer, we're going to reject it. Alright, so we're going to accept the value of p equal to 17. All right. So next we want to find uh, the length of each side of the length. So the p, which is the hypotenuse, so this one will be the 17th meter. Uh, the q, so the q here, as we chose p, equal to 17 as our answer so the q will be equal to 8 so q is equal to 8 meters and for the other length it will be 2 times 8 minus 1 so this one is equal to 16 minus 1 which is equal to 15 number 7 prove that a straight line passing through the coordinate 0 negative 3 intersect the curve uh, with the, these equations at the point 2, 3. So does the straight line intersect the curve at any other points? So just define your answer. So to find whether the straight line intersect the curve at any other point, so we need to solve the equations of the curve with the equations of the straight lines, which we do not have right now. So first we need to find the equations of the straight lines. So here we know that these two points lies on the straight lines. Therefore, we can find the uh, gradient of the straight line using these two points. So, using the formula y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Alright, so the gradient here of the straight line will be, so let us the y2 as the number 3 minus the y1 negative 3. So, the 2 as our x2. 2 minus 0. So here we're going to have 3 plus 3, 6 divided by 2, which is equal to 3. So the gradient of straight line we already have. So from 
this point here, yeah, 0, negative 3. The, this point is actually lines on the y axis. Therefore, straight away we know that the y, this negative 3 is actually the y intercept of the straight lines. So, therefore, the equations of the straight lines is y equal to mx plus c so the m is number 3 so the c is a negative 3 so the equation is y equal to 3x minus 3 so i'm going to label this equation as the equations number one and the equation of the curve that we have here as the equations number two all right so next we're going to substitute the equations one into the equations number two so x squared plus so the y substitute it with 3x minus 3 expand for this part so here you're going to have 9x squared minus uh, here negative 9x double it negative 18x plus 9 So next, we're going to solve for the likes terms. Mm, so x squared plus 9x squared is 10x squared. Negative 18x minus 27x. So this one equal to negative 45x. And 9 plus this 41, it will equal to a positive 50. So we can simplify uh, these equations by dividing every term with number 5. All right. So here you're going to have 2x squared minus 9x plus 10 equal to 0. So we can solve these quadratic equations by factorize it. Alright, so here the first bracket is 2x minus 5. The second bracket is x minus 2. So x equal to 5 over 2 or x equal to 2. Now, if you look at here, x equal to 2, this is the solutions given in the questions. So look at this point 2, 3. So the x is equal to 2, the y is equal to 3. So if I substitute the x equal to 2, for example, back into the equations 1, the y will equal to 3. Therefore, we want to find the other points, right? So next, I'm just going to substitute the x 5 over 2 into equations 1. So y is equal to 3 times 5 over 2 minus 3. Alright, to solve this, you want to find the y is equal to 9 over 2. Alright, so the question is, does the straight lines intersect the curve at any other points? So here, the first one, the answer is a yes. Alright, so justify your answer because we are able to find the coordinates of the other points of intersection. So the coordinates of the other points of intersections, the coordinates will be the x is equal to 2 over 5 and the coordinate y is 2 of 9 over 2. Alright, therefore we already justified our answer. Number 8, a piece of wood measure 1 cm in length and 3x cm in width. A worker intends to cut the piece of wood into two small triangular pieces of wood. So the perimeter of each triangle is 24 cm and the longest sides of either triangle is x plus y cm. So calculate the area in cm square of the original piece of wood. So the wood is measured in length and width, therefore the shape of the wood will be in rectangular shape. And it's cut into two small triangular pieces of wood, which means uh, the wood is cut through the diagonal. So I'm going to draw a green line here. So let us label. The first one is the length, which is y centimeter, and the width is 3x centimeter. And the longer sides of the either triangle, this refers to the hypotenuse, so the x plus y is here. Alright, 
So to solve for the x and y, we need to form the equation first. The first one is the perimeter of each triangle is 24 cm. So we need to sum up all of the length of the triangle. So it will be y plus 3x plus the y plus the x. This will equal to 24. Now solve for the like term, 3x plus x is 4x plus y plus y is 2y equal to 24. Now we can simplify these equations by dividing every term using number 2. So 2x plus y equal to 12. And I'm going to let the y to become the subject of the formula. Therefore, y equal to 12 minus 2x. So this will be the first equation. Alright, so the next equations we can form by using, uh, because we have a right angle triangle here. So we can use the uh, relationship of the Pythagoras theorem. Whereas a square plus b square equal to c square. So c square, the c is referred to the longer side, which is the hypotenuse. So the a and b will be the other two sides. So let's say the a is the 3x and b is the y. So here you're going to have bracket 3x square plus y square. This will equal to x plus y square. All right. So this I'm going to label it as my equations number two. All right. So next I'm going to substitute the equation one into the equations number two okay so the three x square is going to give you the answer of nine x square plus the y square now become bracket 12 minus 2 x square equal to bracket x plus so the y replace it with 12 minus 2 x so first let us expand for this one so here you're going to have 12 square which is 144 minus here you're going to have 24 negative 24x double it negative 48x plus 4x square. So here we're going to solve for the last term first. So here you're going to have 12. So x minus 2x is a minus x. All right, so next for the left hand side, we're going to solve for the likes term first. So here you're going to have 13x squared minus 48x plus 144. Then on the right hand side, we're going to expand this. So 12 squared is 144. So minus 12x double it negative 24x plus x square so next i'm going to move everything to the left hand side so 13 x square minus the x you're going to have 12 x square and negative 48 x plus 24 x so this one will equal to negative 24 x and this one for four minus this one for four it will become zero so therefore, 12x squared minus 24x, this one is equal to 0. So then I'm going to simplify this by dividing each term using number 12. So here, you're going to have x squared minus 2x equal to 0. Next, I'm going to factorize it as I have the common factor of x here. So I'm going to take the x and put it in the front of the bracket. So x minus 2 equal to 0. So here we're going to find the answer, one is x equal to zero, or the other one is x equal to positive two. Now, x equal to zero. If we substitute the x equal to zero into the three x here, what happens is that the width of the rectangular wood will become three times zero is equal to zero. Therefore, we're going to reject the answer of the x equal to 0. And we're going to accept the value of the x is equal to 2. So now, 
we're going to substitute the x equal to 2 into the equations number 1. Therefore, the y, sorry, the x is equal to 2. So here it will be 12 minus 4, which is equal to 8. All right. So now we already find the value of x and y. So the x is equal to 2. Therefore, the width of the rectangular wood will be 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. And the length of the wood, which is y straight away, so this one is at centimeter. All right, so now the question is asking you to find the area of the or, uh, original piece of wood. So the area, so we're going to multiply the length and the width, therefore it's going to be at multiply the 6. So the area will be equal to 48 centimeter square. Number nine. So the diagram on the right show the plans of a rectangular room. A rectangular carpet is to be placed with a distance of one meter from the wall of the room. The area and perimeter of the carpet are 8.75 meter square and 12 meter respectively. So find the length and width in meter of the room. So first, I'm going to label uh, the length of the carpet using the letter x and the width of the carpet using the letter y all right so now we're going to form the equations so first are uh, based on the area of the carpet which is at point seven five so as the carpet is in rectangular shape so the area will be length multiplied the width which is x multiplied the y the answer is at point seven five. So this is the first equation. So the other equations we can form based on the parameter which is equal to 12. So the parameter of the carpet will be x plus x which is 2x plus y plus y which is 2y. This is equal to 12. Now I'm going to simplify this by dividing every term using number 2 so x plus y equal to 6 then I'm going to let the x to become the subject of the formula so x equal to 6 minus y so this is my equations number 2 so next I'm going to substitute the equations number 2 into the equations number 1 alright so the x we're going to replace it with 6 minus y multiply the y equal to 8.75 so expand this you're going to get 6y minus y square equal to 8.75 so this is a quadrant equation and I want the coefficient of my y square is equal to positive therefore I'm going to move everything to the right hand side therefore y square minus 6y plus 8.75 this will equal to 0. Now, this 8.75, we are able to change it in the form of fractions. So, y equal to, y square equal to 6y plus, so 8.75 is equal to 35 over 4 in the form of fractions. So, next, to get rid of the fractions, I'm going to multiply each term by number 4. Therefore, you're going to have 4y squared minus 24y plus, so the number 4 here will be cancer, just left it uh, with the value 35 equal to 0. Alright, so we can solve the quadratic equations using the factorization method. So the first bracket is 2y minus 7 and the other bracket is 2y minus 5 equal to 0. So y is equal to 7 over 2 or y is equal to 5 over 2. So next, I'm going to substitute the value of y that we find into the equations number 2.
So the first x we're going to have is 5 over 2 and the second x is 7 over 2. Alright, so as I already label my length as the x, which should be a little bit longer than the width. So I would say I will going to choose the x is equal to 7 over 2, whereas the width is equal to 5 over 2 in this case. Alright, so now we want to find the length and width of the room. So the length of the room will be uh, the length of the carpet. So in this case, it's 7 over 2. We're going to plus another 2 because we have a gap of 1 meter at both sides. So 7 over 2 plus 2, this is equal to 11 over 2 meter and the width of the room will be the width of the carpet plus another two meter so the width will equal to nine over two meter questions number 10 the diagram on the right show a rectangular piece of cardboard purs of area 224 centimeter square a semicircle sdr was cut out from the cardboard Given that the parameter of the remainder of the cardboard is 72 cm, so find the value of x and y. So first we're going to form the equations. So as the cardboard PURS is in the shape of rectangle, therefore the area will be the length multiplied the width. So when 28x multiply the y, you're going to get 28xy and the area will be equal to 2 to 4. Right, so next xy, I can simplify it by moving the 28 to the other side. Therefore, xy is equal to 8. Alright, so this is my first equation. Now, after the semicircle here has been cut out, the parameter of the remainder is equal to 72. So which means the length of PQ plus the PS plus the arc length STR plus the length QR, then it will be equal to 72. So first we're going to find the uh, arc length of STR. So as STR is a semicircle, so I'm just going to use 1 over 2. This is also the same as you use 180 degree, divided by 360. Then we're going to multiply it uh, by using 2 pi r. So the pi, we're going to use 22 over 7. And if you look at the diagram here, SR is the diameter. Therefore, the radius will be 28x divided by 2 which is equal to 14x. Next, we can simplify these uh, calculations. Okay, this number 2 can be cancelled and we can simplify this 7 and 14. So the final answer for the arc length STR will be 22 multiplied 2x, which is equal to 44x. Alright, so now we're going to form the equations of the parameter. So the length of PK will be 28x plus, P, plus PS and QR which is 2y plus the arc length which is 44x. This is equal to 72. So next I'm going to simplify these equations by dividing every term using number 2. So here you're going to have 14x plus y plus 22x equal to 36. Now I'm going to solve for the last term. So 14x plus the 22x is equal to 36x plus y equal to 36. I'm going to label this as my equations number 2. Alright, so next I'm going to solve this using the substitutions method. So I'm going to use... Mm, the x from the equations number one to be the subject of the formula so here from one x will be equal to add over y 
Okay, let this be the equations number three. So now I'm going to substitute this equations three into the equations two. It will be 36 bracket n over y plus y equal to 36. All right, so if you multiply this, you're going to get 2 at n over y plus y equal to 36. Now, I want to get rid of the denominator y here, so I'm going to multiply each terms by y. So here, when y multiply this 2 at n over y, the y will be cancelled. Therefore, here you're going to have 2 at n plus, this one is going to be y squared equal to 36y. Now I'm going to rearrange this in general form. So y squared minus 36y plus 2 at n equal to 0. Alright, so for these quality equations, you are able to factorize it completely. So the first bracket is going to be y minus 24. The second bracket is y minus 12 equal to 0. Therefore, y is equal to 24 or y equal to 12. So next, we're going to substitute the value of y that we already find. I'm going to substitute it into the equations number 3. So x is equal to n over 24, or the other one, x is equal to n over 12. So n over 24, if you simplify it, you're going to get 1 over 3. And n over 12, you can simplify it and it will become 2 over 3. So therefore, we have two pairs of answer here. When the x is equal to 1 over 3, the y is equal to 24. And if the x is equal to 2 over 3, then the y will be equal to 12. Questions number 11. Mr. Chi Hong instructed the student of Form 4, Kumbara, to draw a rectangular mirror of length 7x meter and width y meter on the wall of the canteen. Two different shapes will be drawn on the wall as shown is in the diagram on the right. AED is a semicircle. Given that the area of the wall is 28 meters square and the perimeter of ABCDE is 26 meters, finds the diameter and radius of the semicircle. Now, if you look at the diagram here, the diameter will be the length of AD. So then the diameter and for the radius we're going to use the length of ad divided by 2. so now let us form the equations and solve for the x and y so the first one is about the area which is equal to 28 meter square so we're going to use the length multiply the width so in this case is 7 multiply the x and y which is 7xy equal to 28 so I can move the 7 to the other side. So x, y will equal to 28 divided by 7, which is equal to 4. So I'm going to label this as my equations number 1. Next is about the uh, perimeter. So the perimeter of the A, B, C, D, E is actually the length of A, B plus the length of B, C plus the length of CD and the arc length of AED. So first let us find the uh, arc length of AED. So this is the same as this is a semicircle. So it will be 1 over 2 multiply the 2 pi r. So here uh, the r will be 7x divided by 2. Now, this number 2 and 2, we can cancel it. And this 7 and 7, we can cancel it as well. And this 2 and this 22, we can simplify it as well. Therefore, the final answer for the arc length of AED is equal to 11x. Alright, so now we're going to form the equations for the parameter. 
uh, AB plus CD, this one will give you the answer of 2Y and BC is 7X and the arc length is 11X. So this will give you the answer of 26. So now we're going to solve for the like terms. 7X plus 11X is equal to 18X plus 2Y equal to 26. And I can simplify these equations by dividing every term using number 2. And I'm going to let the Y to be the subject of the formula. And I'm going to label this as my equations number 2. So next, uh, I'm going to write it on the right hand side here. So I'm going to substitute uh, the equations number 2 into the equations number 1. So X I multiply the Y. Now the Y become 9, 13 minus 9X equal to 4. So I'm going to expand this one. Now this is a quarter equations and if you look at the coefficients for the x square is negative right so therefore i'm going to move this 13x and this negative 9x square to the right hand side therefore you're going to get 9x square minus 13x plus 4 equal to 0. now we're going to factorize this so the first bracket is 9x minus 4 the second bracket is x minus 1 therefore x is equal to 4 over 9 or x is equal to 1 so next we're going to find the value of the y so here we're going to substitute so I'm going to use the blue color here so I'm going to substitute the value of x that we find into the equations number 2 so the first y here this number 9 can be cancelled so 13 minus 4 you get the answer is equal to 9 and this one will be 13 minus 9 which is equal to 4 all right so we have two sets of answer here so when the x is equal to 4 over 9 uh, the y will be equal to 9 and the other one will be when the x is equal to 1 the y will be equal to 4 therefore for this set of answer the diameter will be 7 multiply 9 over 4 which is equal to 28 over 9 meter and the radius we're going to take the diameter and we're going to divide it by 2 and it's the same as you multiply it with 1 over 2 so this will give you the answer of 14 over 9 meter. And if you use the other set of answer, then the diameter will be 7 multiply 1, which is equal to 7 meter. And the radius will be 7 meter divided by 2, or you can multiply it with 1 over 2. So this is 2 over 7 meter. 7 over 2 meter.